Hey everyone, welcome to the next lesson in the WordPress Metabox course. If you recall in the last course, we introduced a custom Metabox user interface, although we didn't actually wire it up to anything. In this lesson, we're gonna take a look at how to define the title, properly sanitize and validate the data, and display it on the front end. And in the lesson after this, we're gonna take a look at how to actually upload the file. So let's go ahead and get started. If you open your web browser, you should see the WordPress custom Metabox that we introduced in the last lesson. We have an input field for the title and we have an input field for the file. Obviously the title is what we're gonna focus on right now. So let's go ahead and try to update the title here with our post. We'll say Panoman by Billy Joel. We'll update it, scroll down, and notice that the values didn't save. This is because we've not hooked up any serialization functions to this Metabox. So let's do that now. Hop over to your IDE, and if it's not already open, that's fine, take the time to do it now. Now the first thing that we need to do is to define a function that will be responsible for saving the data that is contained within the Metabox. So let's do that by creating a function called CPMB save Metabox data. And we need to hook this into an action just like we have with the rest of some of the functions in this plugin. Next, we need to actually verify that the user has the permission to save information. Now, before we begin saving information, we need to talk a little bit about security. Namely, that WordPress has the idea of a nonce value. And a nonce value is basically a security mechanism that makes sure that the data that is being tried to save is coming from the correct source. We need to revisit the display metabox function and quickly define a nonce. All right, so as you can see, I've defined, I've made a call to a function, wp underscore nonce underscore field. And then in the plug, I'm using the plugin base name in the current file. And I'm going to say that this is the custom post metabox nonce field. Next, we'll hop down to the save metabox data and we'll say if cpmb user can save, the data. Now here's the thing. We've obviously made a call to a function that doesn't exist yet. And the function is clearly going to make sure that the user has permission to save the data. This is, a, this is the second pass of a security mechanism. So let's, do that. let's define that function now. Let's set up the function to accept the post ID and to accept the nonce value. In this case, we want to make sure that the user has the ability to save to the given post and that he or she is able to use the nonce value that we've defined in the display metabox function. To do this, there's several steps or several things that we need to check. Okay, before we get to coding, I think it's really important to stub out the ideas that we need to do within this function. First, we need to make sure that this post is not an autosave. Then we need to check that if it's not a post revision. After that, we wanna validate the nonce. If all three of those conditions are true, that is it's not an autosave, it's not a revision, and the nonce is valid, then the user is able to save the data. So. Let's get started with implementing each item line by line. First, we'll check WP is autosave based on the incoming post ID, and then we'll store that in the variable is autosave. Similarly, we'll check revisions by using the WordPress function WP is post revision, we'll hand it the post ID, and then we'll store it in a value is revision. Next, we need to check if the nonce is valid. And this is something that's slightly more complicated, although it's still relatively simple. Okay, so what we're doing here First, we're checking to see if the post collection has our nonce value. And if it does, we're gonna use the WordPress function WP verify nonce based on the incoming nonce that is stored in the post collection, as well as the plugin base name. This is very similar to what we have defined up here in the WP nonce field, except the values are reversed. We are placing the nonce value here and then the plugin base name here. And then up here where we define the nonce field, we use plugin base name and then the name of the nonce field. So let's set up our return statement. Simply put, the return statement says, if it's, an auto, if it's not an auto save or a revision and the nonce is valid, then the user can save the posts. So let's clean up the function a little bit by removing the comments and we can consolidate some of these lines of code. But notice there's something curious here. We're requesting a post ID and a nonce value. We're making a call without that. Now, how are we supposed to know what the post ID is? Well, the save post action will actually provide our callback function with the post ID. It's pretty simple, right? 
So we'll give the post ID. But we're still left with the nonce value. Where do we retrieve that? It's actually really easy because we've defined it up here in the nonce field. So what we can do is copy it, paste it in as a parameter, and then if this returns true, then we're gonna be able to save the data. So let's try that now. All right, so the first thing we wanna do is make sure that the post value is set. So we'll say if is set, post mp3 title, because remember, that is the name that we gave the input field earlier in a previous lesson. And we wanna make sure that the string length of the value is greater than zero. Another way of saying that is just making sure we're not trying to save an empty string. If that's true, the next thing we wanna do is say mp3 title equals post mp3 title. We'll store it in a variable because it makes it a little bit easier to use. Then we'll make a call to update post meta. We'll give it the post ID. We'll give it an mp3 title. And then we'll say mp3 title. Now, this should shave, save the information to the post meta. However, there's no way to actually determine or to display this given what we've done now. For instance, let's save our work, return back to the browser. So let's give an update and let's say that we're gonna use In the Air Tonight by Phil Collins. We'll click on update. But when we scroll down, we should notice that the value isn't populated. Now here's why. Let's return to our IDE. If you look here, we have a placeholder, but we have an empty value. And one thing that we haven't done at this point is acknowledge that the callback function, which is the display metabox function, actually accepts a post object as its, as its argument. This means that we can say, get post meta, post ID, mp3 title, and true, because we want it to return a string rather than an array, and then We'll click save and it will be able to display the title that we've just saved. Browser and refresh. And notice now that it says in the air tonight by Phil Collins, but let's change it a little bit and we'll say master of puppets by Metallica. We'll update it. We'll scroll back down. It's still there. And let's X actually empty it. Let's say update. And it's empty as well. So let's return back to our IDE. And I want to talk a little bit about the get post meta function. Every post in WordPress has metadata associated with it. You can add post meta, you can update post meta, and you can delete post meta as well as get post meta. In this case, we're getting the post meta and it requires three parameters. Well, it requires two parameters, one of which is optional. First, it requires the post ID, which is the one with which we're working, and it requires a key. Here we're using MP3 title. The key must be unique, and it's how you can un uniquely identify a given piece of meta information. Finally, I'm opting to pass in true because I want the value returned to me as a string and not an array. If you retrieve an array, then you have to retrieve the first index of the array in order to generate or in order to retrieve the value for the input box. Let's try to make sure that this is secure. Let's hop over into the browser and let's say script uh, alert hello world script. So now we've got some script tags. We're putting an alert box. Let's update the post. Notice that the script box actually persisted. Now that could be really dangerous when it comes to looking at the site on a front end and we want to be able to strip out all of the tags and we want to strip out all of the scripts and make sure that the only thing that's left is actually pure text. We don't want anything malicious getting through. Now earlier I said that it made for easier readability if we stored the post value into an mp3 title variable. And that's somewhat true but there's also a couple of other functions that we want to wrap around or that we want to pass the post collection into before storing it into the mp3 title. Specifically we want to strip tags and we want to strip slashes. Now what this will do is sanitize the data. If you notice right now, we still have our script tag, the alert function, it says hello world, and the closing script tag. Let's update it. Let's scroll down. And notice now it's just alert hello world, and there's nothing more than strings. It's pretty helpful, right? Now, let's return to the IDE and let's get ready to display this on the actual display of the post. 
So let's create a function. We'll say C P M B display MP3. And we'll have to add this action into the content so that we can choose to display this on an individual post. So the first thing that we need to do is to wrap our code in a if is single conditional. Is single is a built-in WordPress function that will return true if you're looking at a single post. If you're curious about adding this to a page, then you would say is page. Now the content function will actually pass the post or page content as a argument into this function. So we'll say content. And then we'll say return content. You always need to return the content variable regardless of how you're working with the content because it needs to be displayed on the screen. So now we can say HTML equals the MP3 title is, and then we'll all content, and then we'll just concatenate the HTML on the end of the content. So let's go ahead and save our work. I know we're not displaying the name of the song just yet, but let's test if this is working on our Hello World page. Save our work. We'll click Update. We'll view the post. And if you scroll down, you'll notice that it says the MP3 title is. Now, we need to be able to get the given post ID. If you're familiar with the, what in WordPress is called the loop, then you know that we can use a function called get the ID. So we're going to go ahead and do that now. We'll erase a semicolon, and once again, we'll be doing string concatenation. We'll say get post meta, get the ID, mp3 title, and true. Now, get the ID is a WordPress API function that is used within the context of the loop. You can look in the codex if you need more information about that. However, the loop is where everything happens for the blog. Get the ID will retrieve the given post's ID. And just like we need up in updating post meta, we need the post ID. Here we need to be able to get the post meta using get the ID. We'll then use the MP3 title key as well as true because we want it returned as a string. So once again, let's save our work, return to the browser and the hello world page and refresh. And notice that it says alert hello world. This also gives us an option to clean it up a little bit. So right after the colon, let's put a non-breaking space. That's much better. Now, remember just a little bit earlier, I said that we needed to sanitize the data. Let's take a look at what happens if we don't. We'll temporarily comment out our code and we'll just allow people to write whatever it is that they want in the context of the meta box. So let's return to the dashboard and let's once again wrap this in a script tag. We'll hop back to the post and refresh and notice that a dialog appears that says, hello world. We click OK and then nothing shows up. Now here's the thing. This in and of itself isn't really that malicious, but let's say someone was able to put in a timer or an infinite loop where they were able to inject some JavaScript that allowed them to hijack control of your page. That could get really malicious. And there are some very malicious uh, people out there, malicious developers that are out there. And we've covered some of the, what is known as cross-site scripting on WP Tuts Plus. Anyway, I do this just to show you how important data sanitization is. So let's return back to our custom post meta box plugin, delete the line we created, strip tags and slashes, return back to the browser. We will update it. We should notice that everything is stripped out and it is. And let's say, let's call this um, the Superman theme by John Williams. We'll update, we'll revisit the post. And now we're displaying the MP3 title as Superman theme by John Williams. At this point in the course, we've covered a lot of material, but there's still a little bit to go, namely uploading files. Now, it's a little tricky because we have, to use a we have to use several PHP facilities, some file validation. We wanna be able to upload it properly using the WordPress API, and we wanna be able to display an error to our users when something is wrong, such as uploading the wrong file type. But we're gonna cover all of that in the next lesson. So we're about halfway there with our plugin. I'm really excited about the progress that we've made, and I can't wait to see you in the next lesson.